we're at a little building we call the Straw Bell House. And there's a lot of interesting history to this. But first of all, you should know that it's built out of big bales of straw. That's why we call it the Straw Bell House. So the insulation is about that thick in here. You can't have much more insulated house. It's made with oat straw. My friend Jimmy Freeze grew those oats. He wanted to feed his Belgian mare, so he saved the oat seed to feed the mare. And we just uh, harvested and baled up the straw and uh, built a wooden frame to support the rafters. It sort of was an inspiration of a of a fellow, I guess he was about 50 years old or so, and he said, I'd like to build the straw bell house and learn about it. And, and, uh, and so, but then he, he told me how inspired he was by it. And he said, but I could never do that. I looked at him like, what do you mean you could never do it? He said, well, I don't know how to do it. I'm like, don't let that stop you. And he says, well, I don't have anywhere to build it. We were down here at the kitchen. I said, right up there on that hill. And I'll teach you. So then he didn't have an excuse to not build his his dream, you know. I wanted to be dry because cob, I knew I was gonna cover with cob. So obviously this is not straw. Uh, this is a uh, solid cob, is a, an earthen mixture. We dug it up just uh, about 200 feet behind the building. So we hit a little clay bank. This doesn't really have to be good clay, but you mix two thirds sand and one third clay or sticky soil. One of my favorite sayings came out of building with this kind of material. Build with dirt and save the earth. And that's actually one thing we like to teach about is just using local, organic, healthy materials for the opposite of modern American practices. But over time, we, we built this up and all the lumber is uh, locally harvested on this land. It never saw a hard top road. It never got zapped with a scanner. All right here. Cut down the trees myself. Sawed it in the sawmill myself. Found the door somewhere salvaged. I don't know if I found it in the dump truck. I did. It looks a lot better now. I just had to clean it up and paint it. My friend Sal. I uh, got her in charge of the tile floor. I found those tile at the at the local restore. But uh, put a skylight in it because I like a lot of natural light. I put the glass block across the back and little windows here in the front just to let a little bit of light in. That way you don't even have to have electricity during the day. And that takes care of the earth as well. It's a lot more supportive to continuance of existence. I think they call it survival. The way modern America is often leading us, it doesn't really seem like we care about the future. Our children, our children's children, our children's children, our children's children. Our children, our children. But I care about the future, not even just for the human being's sake. I figure all the animals deserve a chance to live as well. And not just live quality of life. There's a big difference between having a quality of life and just being alive. So buildings like this that have the thought and dedication of just using natural materials. And even natural materials really good dog. And just a big doorstep here. I just found those right over there. And I put it on the top of the hill. And I faced it east, which is a traditional spiritual awakening to each day. And the winter sun tracks across there, and so the warmth of the sun hits this spot. And it's just far enough away from the kitchen and base camp activity to have privacy, but far enough away you have that privacy, but you can get, get to it pretty closely too, so it's not too far economically. To, Big, thick walls, all locally harvested. We'll cook those there. Out floor so it's easy to clean. So that is the extreme, 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 extreme short story about the straw 
Bell House. Hope you guys enjoy it. Take care of it.